Every Night is Game Night Preview Series Episode 18, The Dark Eye Role-Playing Game and Associated Products with Philip Neitzel. Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to the Every Night is Game Night Preview Series. I am your host, Jason. Thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, we have a special treat today. You heard right off the jump. This is not just going to be a card game uh, and board game focused podcast. We're going to broaden the spectrum a little bit. Uh, we are really, really pleased to have uh, Philip Neitzel, who works with Ulysses Spiele, and he has a whole bunch of products in the RPG, in the card game world, and other stuff that is applicable to the solo gamer. So we are really excited to have him. Welcome to the show, Philip. Hello, um, and I'm pleased to be here. All right, uh, <laughs> you. Uh, so we're both struggling through a little bit of a cold. So if you, we sound a little bit funny. Uh, it is not the audio quality. We are trying our the best that we can uh, to get some stuff out there. Philip, thank you so much for joining us, uh, friend, in cold, frigid Germany, where the first snow has already landed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that cold, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it was a. Uh, Unpleasant weekend, uh, weather-wise. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we're recording this on the 12th. We'll be airing this as the Kickstarter for your latest uh, line is coming out. So we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself first. You are the editor and line developer for The Dark Eye. Yeah, one of them at least. I'm. Uh, we have uh, a few people working uh, on that line. I'm... Uh, one who's uh, responsible for our subscription products, uh, mostly like we have a magazine and, uh, you know, role-playing game scenarios that come out every two months. Uh, I've worked on the game for uh, for a while now. I contributed to uh, the Aventuria card game, writing some story pieces for uh, Tears of Fire, one of our uh, expansions. I've been, uh, you know, a role-playing... Uh, I, I, I have been a role player and a board gaming player for about my whole uh, my whole life. I got into role playing uh, on my tenth birthday, running my first game for my friends, and uh, have been uh, playing uh, ever since. For our audience, we are going to focus on, you mentioned the Aventuria Adventure Card Game. We're definitely going to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the, there's a base set out and a bunch of expansions you can already dive in. That Kickstarter was last year. So we'll talk about that a little bit. And we're also going to talk about some solo RPG adventures, um, you know, give that a little bit of focus as well. But first, I want to talk about the Dark Eye as a gaming universe. So you have all sorts of products and you're about to launch a new Kickstarter for a rule supplement. Is that correct? Indeed, the Dark uh, Aventuria Compendium. Uh, it will be, yeah, an expansion on the on the core rule set, uh, giving new uh, character options and uh, rules that help you adjust your uh, place to your play style, and uh, yeah, just uh, giving you a lot of uh, new tools to work with uh, in the RPG. And this is an award-winning RPG. I understand you won the prestigious Any at this year's uh, Gen Con. Indeed, we uh, won the Silver Any. Like we got second place in the setting category, which is uh, obviously important for a fantasy role-playing game. The setting is where it takes place, where you uh, where your imagination uh, takes you, and the setting of Aventuria is, uh, of course, where the board game takes place, since. Uh, that's what it's named after. So speaking of that, before we get into the card game itself, I'm interested to hear about this world. So I got a chance to play in it. I got a chance to play the card game. I'll have a separate review of that coming up at some point. And also the RPG. It feels different than what I'm used to. So I'm an American gamer. I grew up with RPGs. I played second edition D&D uh, when I was a kid and, you know, through th- third and fourth and Pathfinder and all that. Um, so I'm used to a, a certain kind of vibe. Like I'm used to, I don't know, I guess high adventure, high magic, uh, dragons around every corner and <laughs> all sorts of like, you know, uh, you can, it's kind of like wham bang from the get go. Um, yeah. but the, this dark eye world is a lot different. So can you tell me a little bit about the sensibility of the world, if that makes sense? Yep. I can. Try that, uh, or I will do it. Um, it's uh, the Dark Eye has been around in Germany for more than thirty years. It has been, you know, like our D and D, 
the game that most Germans started on that has been uh, defining the mainstream uh, in our corner of the world, our language. And uh, yeah, so it has become its own, st- its own thing. It started a lot like D&D, but you know, you know with uh, German sensibilities, like there is an influence of German fairy tales in there. There's an, a German sense of history for the early modern era and Middle Ages because there is a lot more of that around that directly relates to our everyday life. Like you can go out of the door and see a castle in a lot of places in uh, in Germany. So that's, uh, I think that grounds uh, the feeling of the Middle Ages mm-hmm. in here. And the game uh, has like a continuous history. You, uh, We started with that uh, in the 80s too and then it kept expanding there or haven't been revisions. So like you, if you are familiar with, uh, you know, comic universes or, uh, the forgotten realms for, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. That's, Oh yeah. <laughs> I love the forgotten realms. So oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's a continuous role playing game universe as well. And, uh, but we have, you know, we, we didn't, we didn't do retcons with new additions. We kept working on the world, expanding on details, uh, uh, hundreds of, if not thousands of people contributing, players, authors, uh, artists, and uh, that's how the world grew into a very detailed place of its own that has been, uh, you know, defined over uh, a lot of editions and generations of uh, of players. And so there is a kind of a depth to it that's uh, important, and there is a, a reality to it, like uh, one of the early or like a uh, a, a catchphrase that was uh, that has been used for the dark eye is uh, fantastic realism. Like we are trying to make it uh, plausible and grounded within its uh, own reality, and uh, we are still using, of course, fantastic elements like they are they are dwarfs, they stuff you know. But uh, there's depths to those. Like you can play a dwarf and uh, use some like uh, your cliche dwarf. He's like Gimli, he drinks beer, he swings an axe, he has maybe a Scottish accent. And you can play the, play the dwarf like that and be happy about it. Or you can, uh, you know, go deeper into our lore, read, uh, read up on, on it in like the Aventuria Almanac or another source book for the Dark Eye. And then you find uh, depths of detail. Like there are multiple cultures of dwarves who have, uh, about everything is like that. Like our orcs aren't just, yeah, they are evil because they are evil and do evil stuff. They have a they have a culture that's a bit inspired by uh, you know step nomads like the Hans and uh, Mongols and there's there's depths to orcish culture as well. Even if you're usually not playing an orc, so that's I, I think that gives the game a bit more weight. Also, magic isn't as everyday as you are used to from your uh, average D&Ds and World of Warcraft. It's more on a, I would say, Lord of the Rings-ish uh, level of uh, of magic. Like, people in the world are still fascinated when they see magic happening. I'll get to the, like, I played the solo RPG adventure. I'll get to kind of the vibe that I got from a second. It was totally, like, I was just remembering stuff as you were kind of talking about some of the adventures that I had. But I uh, this is a board and card games podcast, so I did want to give a little bit of feature to the Aventuria Adventure card game. So what was the decision behind, like, you know, transporting this and making this into its uh, separate card game? There have been a uh, board game or, uh, you know, non-role-playing game versions of uh, The Dark Eye before. There have been uh, computer games. There was uh, there were miniature t- miniatures games. There was a uh, try to get an... Uh, trading card game off the ground in the 90s. So we are trying to, you know, find other ways to play in Aventuria, our setting. And, yeah, we were offered, like, uh, an opportunity for for a living card game by uh, some designers and uh, decided to uh, develop that. And during development, uh, we really got uh, interested in the... Uh, cooperative play of it or in the or the solo play which relates to this uh podcast like that you can uh pick up the the game and experience an adventure like you would on a role playing game through the medium of a of a card game so we're familiar with Warhammer Quest the adventure card game which 
released and people liked it, but then it kind of got cut short because of different business decisions. Um, mm-hmm. This game, if people are interested in a follow up that works pretty similar, I would say that it hits a, a pretty good sweet spot in terms of like a living card game. It's, it has, it already has like a base set, and I, I think I saw three different expansions for sale on your website. Yeah, we have. Uh... There are three uh, out in English already, I think, and there are more uh, coming. Like we, we have uh, the core box, then we have adventure uh, expansions that uh, provide another adventure you can experience that you can play against with all the mechanics, and uh, another hero with uh, their own deck that you can play and uh, you know use other uh, mechanics and cards to uh, overcome the challenges of. Uh, of the game and then we are uh, trying other things like there is a monster expansion uh, tears of fire where you are fighting a dragon who has their their own deck so there are rules how you can play against the dragon deck on a purely mechanical level or one of uh, your play group can take over the dragon and play against the others so that's uh, that's an idea we are also doing expansions that are that are linking into the uh, into the deck building uh, aspect. In Germany, we have uh, five major expansions out now. In English, I think it's three. So you're mm-hmm. pretty. We are pretty even on that. Like they, there's not a huge gap if you are an English player uh, as opposed to a German one. And you, we will keep translating them and getting them out soon, uh, or, or we are getting them out close to one another in English and German. So, like I said, they, I'll have a fuller review on another episode. But um, the there's two mechanisms here that I think people could kind of grasp at and say, like, what is this? What is, how is this different? Um, so the first one is you, so like any, any, a lot of these games, you have your hand of cards, but they, you can use them for two things. One, you could just use them for whatever they are. So like either a weapon or a skill or something like that. Or there's this phase before you play cards where you have to choose one or two of them to put face down and those become the resource that you use in order to be able to do the powers. So it's like, you know, in Magic, you're playing uh, lands or something, and you're tapping the lands every turn. Uh, in this game, you're exhausting these face-down cards to power up your stuff. So, like, you're slowly getting more powerful, getting these land cards down. And you also have to mm-hmm. make these interesting decisions like, okay, do I want to play this card? Do I want to set up to play this card? Do I want to just, like, you know, basically burn it? Uh, because it's once it's face down, it's forever. Uh, and, you know, do I just make that into my engine so that I can power the other cards? So it's pretty interesting how you uh, were able to execute that. And then the other thing is um, it you, you did the trick of making it feel more like a real role-playing game uh, than some of the other ones because you, it's really simple opposed D20 dice rolling. Uh, so, you know, you're doing your thing and it's like, okay, I'm going to do an attack or I'm going to do a, a dodge around this person. It's like, you know, just roll opposed D20s, which it, it really brought me back to my friend's basement when I was a 10 <laughs> year old or whatever it was. <laughs> that was a pretty cool trick. Yeah. Yep, the adventures that we are using mostly are uh, old adventures from uh, the 80s that were, you know, that have a lot of nostalgia for some of our the Dark Eye players that are now brought into the the walls in the frame of uh, the Aventuria card game. So there is a, a bit of nostalgia uh, built in there for uh, for the audience in the know. So they some of the uh, adventures have a bit of an uh, of an old school feel and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and um, in terms of the like how you weave in the adventure part of it, because you know it'd be really easy to make a, a game like this, an adventure card game that's basically all combat. You know, so like um, I think Pathfinder adventure card game, there's really they don't do a ton to weave in the larger story. Like there's stuff printed on the cards and stuff you can get into the theme of it, but it doesn't like a consistent story so much. But what this game does, and it's a little bit similar to the solo RPG, which we can talk a little about both now, is between each combat encounter, you have a book where you run through like a scenario. So if you're uh, cleaning out some old manor, like you mentioned before, how there's a castle as soon as you walk out in the street in Germany, like you can go to that castle in the adventure and you're kind of going room to room. And you're executing different, you know, it, it tells you like, okay, uh, you, you encounter this, you make a dex check, uh, you encounter this, and you're using your character, like you're using him, which is, that was, that was, I, I was like really 
it took me aback because I'm, I guess I'm not used to having that kind of adventure integrated into what is basically a, a combat heavy system. We wanted to make it uh, feel like uh, you're still engaging with the dynamics of a role playing game a bit. Like there, there is a flavor to to what you're doing. There, there's a reason that there's a there's a story uh, you can follow along as you as you play without uh, that's diminishing the mechanics. It's more like you're uh, it's adding to them like there is a there are uh, there's one adventure set on a ship and uh as it fills with water while it, while it's sinking your the uh, combat is getting uh harder for your characters so that's uh, mm-hmm. that's something where the story and the uh, mechanics interact and they... so you have your you have your combat thing you so you have a combat encounter and you know you have to have these games with combat encounters you can't really get through mm-hmm. too much of that but then you'll have this mechanical way of a quote unquote short rest where you'll get some things back, but you won't just kind of power up and be get everything. And then you'll go through the rest of the adventure and it'll be, you know, you'll read a bunch of text or you read it out loud to your friends and everything. And everybody decides, okay, uh, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to go jump over this beam, you know, with straight or with athletics or I think body control is one of, one of the stats in your, uh, on your characters. Uh, and it's, it yep. was, it's fun. Like it, <laughs> and it was, a kind of neat way so like i guess if you're uh you know really onto the me- mechanism stuff you might you know it's like eh, i'm not i'm not into this i might skip this just to get to the combat you know uh but if you're into both if you're into that combat and the and the theme i thought it was really cool we thought about as uh not necessarily just a way of solo play but as a way to to have a role-playing like experience without one of your having to be the gm like Hey, we just want to uh, get around. No one of us uh, was willing to prepare a game, but we are picking up our material, and uh, yeah, we just take turns reading the descriptions, and uh, it still feels like we are playing the playing the dark eye. So it's a kind of a way to uh, to replace uh, a missing player in a way. Mm-hmm. So then, um, then it's it definitely of a piece with the solo rpg adventures so you know yeah. leaving aside the card game which is you know pretty excellent um i enjoyed it i, I definitely enjoyed my plays I, de- I plan on keeping it around um so the um the solo rpg it's basically a choose your own adventure right uh the, the books we read as kids you know you read a paragraph or you read a section then they say okay you know go to section 64 which is halfway in the book or you make a choice or do you go into the well or do you yell for help <laughs> uh go to this go to that so you know we, we were used to that as as kids but there's a couple of twists on it number one it's still you're still playing your character and you're still like you have to make skill checks and you have to make you know uh different um, there's, and he's even like a streamlined combat system. And depending on the resolution of those checks or that, or that encounter, you go to different parts of the book. Are, how involved are you in the solo RPG adventure, uh, formation? I, for, for the one you read, I think you had the Vampire of Havana. That's the one. As a, yeah, that's the one that's out in English already. The, I, uh, wasn't too involved in that one. I'm, but the follow up that will, release in english soon i think uh first half next year um which is uh, a conspiracy of wizards or a conspiracy of mages uh where you there i uh did the character creation like i we our author uh, sent it in uh, another uh, editor approved of the whole uh story structure and then i went through and uh, looked at the rules and built a character so they are there's a pre made character that's uh that can manage all the challenges in the in the book and has the right uh, skill sets to uh to play with but also has some uh personality traits that give you a hint of uh how you can approach the choices there that you aren't mm-hmm. just playing yourself so but well you can play it as yeah what would i do but you can also play it as uh what would this character do and i I created the character to be uh, engaging for that. Yeah, it's definitely for people uh, who, like, they'll make a character, but they 
it doesn't stop when the session stops, right? Uh, so there's people that they go, like, as soon as the session stops, they level up, but then they go into the compendium and they look at all of their stats and, you know, they, they roll up their characters and I want this magic item, I want, you know, this feat or whatever it is. Um, but there's other people who, like, mentally kind of continue the adventure in their head where it's like, oh, yeah. I wish I could uh, continue um, doing this. And, you know, uh, we did this, um, our party took this choice, but I wish I could go back into the town and follow up on this or whatever it is. So this, these adventures are definitely for that second gamer that I described where you want to continue the adventure and your group just isn't around or maybe it's, it's holiday season and you can't get anybody together. And it's like, all right, I'm just going to continue the adventure and have some fun. Yep. Or you're uh, thinking about, Hey, uh, I will be playing a rogue next time. So, how does it feel to to be a rogue in this world? And then you pick up the vampire of Avena and you you get a first impression of your rogue. And uh, when you meet the party with your new character, you can you already have a tale to tell at the uh, at a tavern. Mm-hmm. And then the 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 thing that I love, and if I had a little bit of a criticism, I'd say that it isn't quite enough, at least in this adventure. But you open a door to it, which had me really excited. Was some of the choices it it really depended on how well you knew the lore and how well you knew the town. So like if you go into a branch and it says, do you go to the wharf or do you go inside the market? It actually benefits you to know what's on the wharf and what's in the market from the source material. You are saying before how there's a rich lore, um, lots of stuff going on. I was the kind of gamer that always wanted to like my, in my adventures, I always wanted to, uh, take advantage of the fact that I just knew the Forgotten Realms book back and forth. Like, I knew everything. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that Eberron, Eberron was another one of my favorites. I knew that book back and forth. I knew why the morning happened. I knew all this stuff. And it never came out in the sessions because none of the other people were interested. Uh, and here, it, like, you know, I wish, again, like, it wasn't too, too much, but I could see the seeds of its solo adventure really being like, okay, you've read this book back and forth. Now go play in that book. It's not just abstract and generic. It's this particular world. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, definitely one of the uh, ways you can engage with it. Like the, we try to make the solo adventures playable with just our core material like we are doing with all our uh, scenarios. You just need to call rules and the uh, Aventuria Almanac, our you know, world description, but you can zoom in into the world and read uh, more uh, source material, get more lore, get more uh, history, and you can keep up with the current going on by uh, reading the Aventure and Herald, our, uh, you know, in-game newspaper uh, that is is describing what's going on in the world. And so you can engage uh, Aventure, yeah, and the Dark Eye even... You know, it's. I would say that's uh, also a form of a solo play or a form of uh, enjoying uh, your character or the world your character inhabits and the role playing hobby on your own by reading and uh, thinking about uh, this world, imagining it, and uh, being engaged with the plot, even if even while your character is, isn't uh, actually doing something, but they can uh, talk about what the character heard in the newspapers or what they uh, what they know will happen in this uh, or has happened in this place uh, uh, in the world. And then uh, that adds to the experience at the table uh, with your friends. So um, we were talking before, there are other products that Ulysses Spiela has uh, to offer. So maybe you can uh, share a little bit about what else uh, we can, you know, is available to us if you log on to your website. Yeah, well, we have... Uh, as a licenses in the role-playing game world, we have uh, Tork, uh, which is uh, a reality-hopping uh, role-playing game where your where other realities invaded Earth and uh, your characters uh, either come from one of those uh, strange realities or are denizens of Earth who have to fight back against the uh, inviting, uh, yeah, reality storm. And uh, so that's uh, a different feel than uh, you know ground fantasy. But uh, it's also a, a fun game that has been kickstarted successfully and uh, has a deep history as a property coming from the 80s also. And it will be uh, coming out 
very soon uh it has been shipping shipping to the uh, kickstarter backers uh lately and so it will be uh in stores uh afterwards um we are also developing uh while we have been speaking about warhammer we are uh developing a new role playing game for the warhammer 40k universe oh, nice. called Ras and glory where uh, you will be hearing a lot more about that one uh over the next year or so, uh, if you're if you're following our website or social media, there there will be lots to uh, to experience in, uh, in that universe as well. All right, so uh, yeah, this is uh, like I said, a little bit of a non traditional episode because we're talking so much about RPGs. But the Aventuria card game is definitely uh, something that a solo player uh, should keep an eye on, and there's all sorts of solo RPG. Uh, stuff out there just in case you wanted to dive in and get a little bit something different than you might be used to so um thank you so so much for joining us philip uh you know uh good luck with that weather and good luck with that <laughs> the sickness and all that yep you too and that's gonna go ahead and do it for another episode of the preview series uh thank you so much for joining us and thank you philip for sharing uh despite your cold um sharing a little bit about a corner of the solo gaming universe that maybe we didn't think about too much uh, you know solo rpgs really uh solo games are bad enough <laughs> but uh it's it's really fun and i encourage you to at least give it a try have an open mind and check it out so if you would like to leave some feedback, if you'd like to interact with the show a little bit more, uh, we are at ENGN underscore podcast on the Twitter. I also lurk pretty actively in the Solo Games Facebook group, as well as the One Player Guild on BGG. You can also find us at our website, everynightisgamenight.com. Uh, and I'm going to ask for this every single time. Uh, please, 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 uh, if you have iTunes and Google Play Store and Stitcher and SoundCloud, all those places where you can give us a rating, five stars or whatever the rating scale is, the more ratings we have on these different platforms, the more we float to the top in terms of search engines, people can find us easier and we can get the message out about solo games and RPGs and whatever we're talking about. Uh, we really, really love it and we'd really appreciate it. So that's it. This is Jason signing off. Later, everybody. Later.